I'm holding an ultra super flash drive with this game. So how many terabytes do we have here on this media? Look, when there were video cassettes, uh, there were just 10 kilobytes in one minute. So if you have a 60 minute cassette, there are 600 kilobytes here, 300 kilobytes on every side. Well, it's interesting. It's really history. You know, these audio cassettes uh, were quite cheap, so they decided to use audio cassettes for computer programs because uh, it was really cheap. <laughs> Do you remember this sound? It's really cool. Yeah. The computers were not so small. And I think computers were not so cheap. That's right. Is this a computer for everyone? That's right. Before Spectrum came out, all computers were usually quite expensive, and they were used in offices. Before talking about Spectrum, I need to mention ZX80, which was produced before, and this was the first computer affordable to the ordinary user. ZX80. And what about those huge computers which uh, took up the whole offices and cost a fortune? And now an ordinary person could buy such a computer. Yes, that's this computer. This is what it looks like. So that's what Apple is doing right now. Without wires, without a keyboard. Yeah, history develops in a spiral. It all comes back. As a monitor, we use uh, the usual TV set, and uh, they use audio cassettes for data storage, and this is the computer itself, there is the motherboard here. How much memory does it have? The RAM memory was very small. There is just one kilobyte, one kilobyte of memory of RAM. And it's also the video memory. So the more lines uh, there are on the screen, the less uh, space there is for the game itself. What could you do on this computer? It's uh, based on the basic language, and you can start coding there. So I can learn how to code. It's not just uh, uh, <laughs> Typewriter, yeah? You can learn how to code. That's beautiful. In a year, there was a new model, ZX81 by Sinclair. Here it is. Let's look at it. It became smaller. It became black. It's less a designer solution. And the price went down by 50%. It cost just 50 pounds sterling. 50 British pounds. It's cheap, just uh, four chips. And it can do the same things. You can do some math calculations at home, but mostly it was uh, used for learning. Yeah, I remember this Sheldon series when they bought a the first computer for, for, for Sheldon. So both of those computers were black and white, no graphics. But by the end of 1981, there were 70% of uh, colored TV owners. No one wanted to play in black and white. They wanted more color, and Sinclair produced this machine, ZX82. But then the name was ZX Spectrum to emphasize that this computer was uh, a color computer. This computer can produce color images. 56, 156 by 192 dots, but there was no sound, and there was no Yandex music back then, right? No, there wasn't. So, now that it's in color, there are games here. Let's see what we have here. Here is the game that we have. It came out a little bit later than in 83. There is a fun music. 
and you need to run a jet which bombs those buildings, and then you need to land your airplane. Green airplane and multicolored buildings. That's nice. But why do you play this one? Actually, it's uh, very close to my heart. That's the first game I saw in my life. When my neighbor had a computer, I was back uh, in the first grade back then. And so this is the first game I played. So did your neighbor have a, an English computer? No, it was the Russian clone of that computer. You can read the story, but actually there was a group of foreign students who came here and then our scientists got this computer for two hours and they decided to copy it. Yes, they worked at the Lvov Polytechnical Institute and they took a special tool, they actually copied this computer within just two hours and then they used this data to do a replica of this motherboard. And we understand that they did this. Is that correct? Yes. And then the motherboard was copied and was spread to all the uh, cities of uh, the former Soviet Union. And it was Spectrum clones that became their first computers. Actually, my classmate uh, asked me to visit his place, and uh, then he had this big computer, and we waited for a lot of time before we could launch the game, but then we were crazy about this game. Is it the same game? Yes, this computer was very popular thanks to the video games. Today there are more than 10,000 games for this computer Spectrum, and uh, people write and create new games for Spectrum. There are a lot of enthusiasts uh, who write games for Spectrum. And even at Yandex there are contests to create games for this computer. That's cool. Next to me, there is a computer that is burning my elbow. That's the next model of Spectrum. This was the 82 model. And here, there is uh, the improved 85 model. It's called Radiator. It gives off heat because it becomes warmer. We called it a toaster. You can almost fry bread here. You can almost bake bread. But first I need to play this computer. Watch this game. Here we have a game which took the third place last year at the Yandex contest. So this computer dates back uh, to 1985, and uh, the game was produced last year. That's cool. What do you need to do? Yes, you need to mine gold. And then you need to take an axe and uh, cut your way through the bricks. Well, I'm not here to play games, of course. Well, somebody killed me. Well, let's leave it aside because it might overheat and uh, give me a burn. Is this one more powerful? Yes, there is more memory. In the original Spectrum it was uh, 48 kilobytes, and here we have 128 kilobytes. And the, there is uh, full-fledged three-voice music here, the 8-bit. Yeah. Music. It became available on the Spectrum in 1985. That's beautiful. So the Englishmen were the founders of uh, the modern computer, right? I wouldn't call them founders by, or pioneers, but they left their trace in history. You know, it's like uh, in fast food, uh, everything is compared to Big Macs, but in computers, everything was linked uh, to the average salary the time. So if an ordinary employee can afford to buy such hardware, then the manufacturer wins. Yes, that's correct. And now we can move on. We have a contest award right now 
for our demodulation process. So let's start our award ceremony and find out who has won. That's cool, let us start. The Yandex Retro Games Battle was, for the first time, organized by the Yandex Museum last year. We had 200 games, but only 19 participants made it to the finals. This year, we decided to make this contest truly international. We have a landing on four languages, English, Russian, Spanish, and Portuguese, because a lot of retro enthusiasts live not only in Russia, but all over the world, and they still love these computers. And at the end of the day, we had 15 games that were really different, very interesting, from all over the world. Six of them were not produced by our compatriots from Russia. It was difficult to choose the best game. It was interesting. And this year we invited foreigners in our jury. We have, for example, Simon Butler. It's an artist. Mr. Jones, also an employee of the company. We have Andre Aur. This is a person who represents uh, the Cyclop planet in Portugal. And there is a whole community, Luanda del Spectrum. Those are guys who are from Spain who are active in preserving our historical heritage of the computer. And finally, our traditional jury members, Roman Mendlin, our chairman, Yuri Matveev, Alexei Shirokov, and Kirill Kogan. Okay. I can spend hours about the contest, but let us get down to the ceremony of announcing the winners. Uh, let's have a look at what places are here. Good afternoon, dear Russian friends. Greetings from Portugal. I'm the founder of Planeta Sinclair and I write for uh, several Spectrum magazines. I'm one of the judges, judges of this competition as well. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for the honor of being invited again to this brilliant competition. Just like last year, I had the pleasure of playing so many and great uh, new games. Most of them would have been a success in Spectrum's first golden era, era during the 80s and 90s of uh, last century. Spectrum is more alive than ever, I can say. It is also interesting to see that the proposals include includes many kinds of games, some, some of which are rarely, rarely seen today. Even here in Portugal, it's crystal clear the importance everyone has given to uh, this competition. I'd like to congratulate all colors and teams for the huge effort they put into their work. Uh, and I can say it was really hard for us to pick the best one. Um, regarding the games, uh, Code um, 112 was a very competent uh, and ugly original game. Uh, it's a pity uh, it had just a few levels. Uh, Cosmic Payback was technically perfect. Uh, I remember I played it for the whole day until I completed it. Uh, 1024, uh, I guess most puzzlers will love it. It's a different approach uh, for the when 1048 game. Marsmar, uh, Marsmar Alienation, it's amazing. Uh, it reminds me of wonderful games like Dendera or Rex. White Jaguar has great graphics. Uh, it is not a big game, but it has a great potential. Uh, and I think there, is, there will be a, a sequel. Red Rive. Red Rive is uh, the beginning. It's a great achievement for a game in BASIC. Your yours great adventure. Um, almost everybody loves uh, a good arcade, ad arcade adventure. Uh, I love this, so I love this game. Bullet Storm is a different and nice, uh, different and nice approach for a shoot em a shoot em up uh, created with arcade game designer. Cygnus Alpha, 
I guess it was the most ambitious and original project, but uh, it has some bugs uh, and, too many and too many keys. It increased the playability. And at last, I'd like to talk about Enigmatic, another highly original project. It shows um, we can do different games uh, with standard engines like Arcade Game Designer or uh, La Chorera. So um, there are all, all games are uh, are great. So um, it was uh, wonderful to to play it. Let's keep the specky uh, alive. Greetings from Simon Butler from Liverpool, England. Um, first of all, I'd just like to thank everybody for including me in this year's Yandex competition. I'm honoured and very privileged to have been part of it. Um, it was infinitely more exciting and interesting than I ever, ever imagined. It's so uh, wonderful to see people still developing for the ZX Spectrum. Uh, I know I'm doing stuff for the ZX Spectrum next, but the good old Spectrum, um, it's nice to see people still supporting it and still turning out some amazing products. So everyone who supplied their wonderful titles, I'd like to congratulate every one of you. You did a sterling job, you really did. There were some old school games, new school, some very surreal titles, um, some very relaxing, some very challenging product. All of it, all of it uh, was wonderful and I enjoyed every single minute. So even though there's got to be winners and there's got to be losers in the competition, everybody is a winner because everybody is still supporting this classic machine and still turning out quality product. So I'd like to just finish by saying I wish you all the very best in the competition. To those that win, congratulations. To those that don't, do not be disheartened, do not be upset, do not be sad. Just be glad that you're part of the development team, um, you're part of the community and move on to the next project and the next project. You're talking or you're listening to someone who's worked on more failures than successes. So this is Simon Butler saying to everybody who took part in the competition, thank you. To those who asked me uh, to be involved, thank you very much. Maybe I can do it again in the future, who knows. But until then, stay safe, stay retro. Bye now. Hello, my name is Mark R. Jones and I used to work at Ocean Software back in the day making Spectrum graphics. So you may, over the years, have played one of the games that I worked on. Um, this year, I was honoured to be asked to be a judge for the uh, Yandex Retro Games Battle 2020 competition. So a couple of days ago, um, I went through all the titles that I'd been sent and uh, gave them all a go and then sent my scores off to the judges. A couple of the ones that I thought were really good was uh, White Jaguar. That looked lovely, nice graphics, really small ones, but uh, still look beautiful. Reminded me of uh, a bit of Jack the Nipper 2, Coconut Capers by Gremlin, uh, a, a game that I bought back in the day. Code 112, I like that one too. That had uh, some nice sound and reminded me of the original Metal Gear Solid uh, that came out on the PlayStation many years ago. Mars Mere Alienation, that had a super loading screen. A uh, choice of four languages, which obviously helped me because I don't speak Russian. Uh, great graphics, great 128 sound, nice and colourful, uh, and with hardly any colour clash, so that was well done. Uh, Cosmic Payback was another one that I really liked. That had some good 128 music. Reminded me a bit of a cross between Gremlins, Trailblazer, uh, and a game by Houston called Impossible. Another one that I bought when I was, uh, I was working at Ocean when I bought that. Uh, I thought that was really good. Uh, a couple of things that I didn't like. One game crashed if I loaded it in 128 mode. Well, if it doesn't load in 128 mode, put it in the instructions and tell people to put their machine into 48 mode. Uh, a couple of awful key layouts. Just use QAOP space. There's no, there's no reason to use anything else. Uh, one title kept crashing, resetting the machine, uh, which is never good if you're trying to play a game. 
Some of them had no English language option, which made it really difficult for me to, to play because obviously I don't speak Russian. Uh, and some instructions didn't actually tell you what the keys were. Just, uh, just write them down so you're not fiddling around playing with the keyboard. Uh, other than that, I thought there, were, there was lots of really good games. A um, couple of them were written uh, in 24 hours, so I didn't really think it was fair to pitch them against games that would probably take a month to write, but anyone who can code a game has done better than me because I haven't got a clue. I had a look and uh, goes went in one ear and out the other. So well done to everyone, uh, and I look forward to seeing what games you come up with for next year's competition. Bye then. Hi, everyone. I'm Alejandro Ibáñez from Zaragoza, Spain. I'm a part of the elmundodelespectrum.com staff. First of all, I want to thank uh, the Yandex organization for allowing uh, us to be part of the jury. It's an honor for us. I also want uh, to say that from Spain, we follow uh, with great interest everything that is done in Russia. We are separated by a language and several thousand kilometers, but we are together by love for the spectrum. This year, Yandex has shown great quality. We are amazed uh, by all the games. We also liked the variety of styles. Uh, we have uh, our favorites, but we don't want to reveal this, their names. We just uh, want to wish everyone luck. Uh, on behalf of our, of our thousand uh, of fans and the entire team, thank you and uh, bye everyone. Okay, as you could guess, this was the address from our international jury members. Thank you so much for the warm words. And sadly, now the tension is up, the suspense is up among all the participants, all the contesters, when we're going to announce the winners. Impatience of many contestants was so high that some contesters came to Yandex Museum from Volgograd, just expressing their impatience, just dying to find out who is going to be among the three winners. Prize winners. Winners. To announce the third place, I'd like to invite to the restroom Roman Mendlin, the foreman of the jury. My name is uh, Roman Mendlin. This is for the second year that I have the honor and privilege to be the chair of uh, Yandex um, Gameplay Contest. I'd like to thank Yandex for this honor and privilege. Tell us please about your impressions of that contest. I'd like to say that you have noted very correctly that uh, it has become an international contest. Really, it is an international contest, be not because uh, it's been joined by the authors and designers from many countries, but this is because uh, of how it's been treated by the community. I'm ke ke keeping track of uh, some network editions and uh, magazines, and last year, actually, most of the media said that uh, some Russian guys did something interesting, but this year, the reaction is totally different. We have become part of that um, life and community, and it once says that Yandex raised the bar even high, and this year, they presented some very interesting works, and uh, this year it is totally different, so it's been described as uh, something different as of the attitude. This is really true, because you cannot but uh, take into consideration the feedback from our international audience. They are fans, they are gamers, and they are loyal to our favorite retro computer. I do think that uh, the credit goes to the organizers. Uh, Yandex can be credited with arranging the contest, which implied that some guys with their very thick lenses of the uh, spectacles would do something. And there was a problem last year when the results were drawn. An opinion was expressed that okay, you are lucky this time because just uh, actually cannot do a computer game within 24 hours. Just guys actually had uh, something prepared 
And they just uh, finished that. And uh, the previous author said that they spent uh, dozens of years on actually writing the uh, games. And uh, years we come and uh, just basic um, designed games would be submitted for the contest. But now we see what level of the games have been presented for the contest. And it turned out to be totally different. First of all, among the contest um, contenders, we have uh, totally new members. This is not just to show the limited number of actors that the same actors, the same authors are making the games all the time and we give them the same prizes. So it didn't happen like that. So we almost have 100% totally different contenders. And uh, there are just a couple of guys who are the same and we would like to mark their insistence last year. They did not not win anything, but still they decided to submit the works for this contest once again. And uh, the overall quality of the games did not uh, deteriorate. These games are still very interesting. All the contenders, all the contestants, they all did um, just awesome work. If we compare that to what's been done by the commercial studios in 1980s, 1990s, actually these guys are even better than what's been done in 1980s, and that's just great. Okay, let's find out who actually took the third place. The bronze goes to John Connolly who designed Cosmic Playback Game, and he's number three. Congrats. This night, I got in touch with John, asked him to actually tell us about him himself. John is a student, undergraduate. He goes to university in north east of England. He's 19 years old. This is not his first game, and uh, compared to his previous games, uh, this one is really much better. So let's play it. I'd like, uh, actually, to keep the intrigue for those who did not know anything about that game. I will not tell you what it is about. This is very important because uh, we'll smoothly get down to that, and you have to guess what it is about. Just um, in terms of diversion, for contenders, uh, for contesters, for those who only plan to participate on that, I'd like to draw attention to the fact that Games have certain components, so the game certainly has to be very interesting. It has uh, to be beautiful with nice uh, graphics and nice music. And very often people actually make a mistake um, betting on uh, just one component, a nice game but without uh, good music. Unfortunately, such game cannot compete against those uh, which incorporate all the three components. Let me show you the Cosmic Playback uh, cover. When I saw that, I just got surprised because this is um, photo quality Probably it can be done with the modern tools, and I'm not very much familiar with the technology and how it's been drawn, but for me it was just great. Just uh, this is not black and white, and John, let me show a lot of respect to you, so I would like to praise this cover because it actually gives a lot of impression of that game. I can spill the beans, uh, this very game was my favorite, because uh, I just uh, was lost. Uh, I totally immersed into the atmosphere of 1980s. I do think that uh, this game can uh, take the same ranks as your favorite games of the childhood. So first you will see some text which describes the situation you have to run into in the game. And I suggest once again, let us guess what this game is going to be about. I will translate that. Okay, certainly. All eyes and all ears. Earth 2562 AD. Uh, just it's all very dire on 
Earth, on planet Earth. So the war broke out, it uh, splits uh, the world into camps and uh, the peace settles down. But uh, a bunch of aliens uh, so steals uh, the most precious asset, the gold. And once there is no gold on planet Earth, the uh, financial crisis takes place uh, because financial markets crash, uh, electronic uh, chips no longer are produced. Nothing works without gold. The only chance for the inhabitants of planet Earth is to create some space force in order to recover the gold. In order to do that, they have to collect the pieces of gold which are still there. I'm not sure whether they have some gold teeth this year, but probably all the golden earrings were taken away from the people, and they built a spaceship which is fitted with a small ball-like probes, which can be dropped on the planets uh, to recover or to collect the pieces of gold. So a player is suggested to become a pilot of such a probe and to collect gold and to save the whole world. Well, that keeps smiling because he's familiar with the game, but it has to be a total bonanza. Some collectors of gold, the ruins of the earth, some smoldering shabbies, and uh, Russians uh, just uh, running along with the bears because uh, Russians and bears are totally unkillable. Can we have a look at that bonanza? Show that to me. <laughs> there is this virtual zone of a meter and a half, uh, which I can't approach. Just tell me, please. Well, this game is called Cosmic Payback. You have to pay for something, so what is it about? It's when astronauts go to the International Space Station and the WC doesn't work there or maybe it, you should pay for it. So this is the game. I hope you can see it now. Now I should uh, redefine the keys, left, right, up, down. And now there are two options in the game. It's also important. It's an advice for those who write games. The gaming traditions change over time. Back in the 1980s, during the slot machine era, it was very important not to die in the game. The goal was to survive. But then the games became different. The player should reach the end of the game, because uh, the player is uh, sitting at home during hours. So there are two modes here. In one mode, you are killed. In the second mode, you are also killed, but you have uh, an endless amount of lives. So this game is not paid. So we choose one of the modes and launch the game. This is really beautiful. We have this text again. We go down the Amaltea planet, and our task is to mine gold. <laughs> So, no need to read all this text. You should play. You are our last hope. And this is the ball. The motto of this game is that those balls are not what they seem to be. This is a spaceship which mines gold in space and saves humanity. This is how this ball jumps, and this is called gold. I just want to tell you that this is a really nice game. And when will the game start? This is the game. This is our spaceship. Switch on your imagination. That's the point of a 1980 game. Your imagination starts switching on. 
и которых следит за его тенью. Player, вот все, что здесь важно, это тень. Это follows not the ball itself, but uh, <laughs> keeps an eye on the shadow of this ball. You need to be aware of the shadow. I don't, I don't remember many games like this with this mechanics. You have to jump over the abyss, and the first level is a tutorial one. We can see the ball, we can see those uh, dark squares which are considered to be gold, and there are traps. Are there any monsters on the second level? And um, there is also the time running. I didn't set the time record, but I passed this level. Okay. There are 15 levels here. And I should admit, I only made it to level 4. It seems to be a simple game, but it becomes more and more complex with every level. And to be honest, I was unable to move further. There are many interesting things here. There are teleports, there are traps. <laughs> which catch your spaceship and the task is to collect those blinking squares but with every level this game becomes more exciting not only more challenging even now on this level it's quite difficult to jump over this abyss there is a moving platform below you and you need just to get on the platform that's beautiful. Do you have a rating of uh, how players relax? This game doesn't seem to be able to unnerve anyone. You can stop, do a pause and uh, drink tea. Is that correct? Yes. And this is for a reason. In some situations, you waste so much energy that you have to make a break. So this is why we scored this game so high. There are possibilities for a gamer to pause. Or maybe you get a call from work. Yes, uh, that's about your story when you didn't hand in the thesis in time. So with just basic graphics, basic means and tools and basic ideas, you can make a very interesting game. This is a really thrilling game. I spent a lot of time on learning how to play this game. The next level has uh, some more difficult tasks, and I think this game deserves its third place. Not only the third place, but also the money prize and uh, the Nintendo console. I think that uh, the developer should be glad. And all these games are there on our website, Yandex Retro Games Battle. You can download those games. There are different emulations, so do this. You can play those games. Well, thank you, Roman. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, dear designers, who spent a lot of time and energy. And it was not a waste, because this year we have had excellent results. Thank you. Well, and now, after a small break, we will learn who won the second place in our contest. And to announce uh, the winner of the second place, I would like to invite here the editor-in-chief of uh, KG Portal and the Pixel Portal, Mikhail Sudakov. Hello, Mikhail. What's so special about this year's contest? How is it different from last year? To be honest, this year has been really great. When I learned that last year's winners uh, were not going to participate, I was a bit worried. But then, when I started playing this year's games, I saw that they were really cool. They are really professional. And they are made with love. 
to this computer, to these tools. Even this game is quite unusual. So everything was top level, with just a few exceptions. Can I give you a piece of advice? Yes, of course, why not? Well, I'm not a jury member, but I can give you a piece of advice. Those people who participated in this contest should first of all do this universal package. There should be everything, graphics, music, the game mode. And secondly, don't forget about the controls. Sometimes people don't pay attention to that, but actually some of the games suffered because of that, because the control was uh, not well thought through or not very clear. Even within our gameplay, we had an excellent gameplay, but the controls were not very comfortable, so that's why the grades were lower. But there were a lot of cool games, plenty of them. I have really positive emotions, just last like year, or maybe even better. I really loved half of those games. I passed some of them, I completed them, some of them made me really nervous, some of them gave me lots of pleasure. So who took the second place in our contest? We can announce it. It's White Jagger by Roman Varfalameev. Roman is not a newcomer, he also took part in last year's contest uh, with Yuri Patapov. Back then he took the second place and uh, the fifth place, and this year he took the second place. Well done, Roman. It's a cool, beautiful game. Sometimes it's really difficult. It's a real hardcore game. Demon Souls from Spectrum seems to be a difficult game, and this is a very hard game as well. So what do we have here? I don't see it very much. That's it. Excellent. So, my game is called White, sorry, White Jaguar. This is part one, maybe there will be part two. It's a game about an Indian who is called, okay, I forgot his name, maybe it's not so important. So we need to redefine the keys. Some people might think that it's a little bit strange. Q for jump, IA for sitting down, and action is space. But for spectrum, it's very habitual. Well, uh, maybe it's a little bit weird to those people who work at modern computers. But for those who play retro computers, it's really convenient. Yes, that's right. You need to have all your fingers on the buttons at the same time. When I bought a PC computer, I had to change completely the position of my fingers because uh, people compared me to a spider before that. So let's start it. Here's the plot. This is the valley of Orinoco. And an Indian called Wakhan should beat uh, his enemies and become a white jaguar. This is a platform, a game with great music, great graphics. There's a lot of detail. Look at the animation. You can see the hair of uh, the main character. Mm. A wave in the wind. You see there are some bushes, there's a cactus, so there is a great level of detail and that's really cool. Nothing static here. 
This is a really complex design. <laughs> of course, it's very difficult uh, to both speak and play at the same time, so I'm going to make mistakes here. And we offered you a joystick or a keyboard. And then people said, no, no joystick, please. Yes, with a joystick I would die here at once. It would be very sad. Walker says uh, has a number of tomahawks. You need to gather them. There might be a maximum of nine tomahawks or axes, and you need uh, to spare them well. You need to be very precise, no hurry here. You need to jump and run. The game has a few retro features. And I believe that uh, the author of this game could become a millionaire if this game was uh, uh, had come out in the 1990s. And you have a limited amount of time. Yes, I hurried a little bit here and I died immediately. Okay, on every screen there are a lot of enemies and there is one more moment here, there is a teleport. You come in here and you get back from here. Maybe it's difficult to explain to people why this game is so play if they don't, don't know Spectrum, but the colors are great, the technical limitations of Spectrum are really to taken into account. Now, there is this bad guy with tomahawks. If you shoot your tomahawk at this person, and then the tomahawks disappear in thin air, but you have a limited number of tomahawks. And now, let me show you what's so special about this game. This is a special genre, which says that you run. I will kill this guy because uh, he stands in my way, and you can't pass some things, but then you find an item. Okay, I spent a tomahawk. This is really difficult. Oh, no, not this. You see, there's a lot of things like this. During the first gameplay, I saw a lot of things like this. Have you passed this game? Yes, but to be honest, it was with saves. You have to bend down here. It will take you a week to pass this game. You know, we had a limited amount of time to play all those games, so physically I would not be able to pass this game. That's why I used saves. I, I completed this game, but I used saves. I cheated a little bit, because on the emulator you have this possibility. Here are icicles from the top, which are really twisting. They fall right on you. That's a nightmare. So you really love this game. And uh, the grades are very high for this game. Yes, they're very good. So you can play for hours this game. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for the game. All right, in a while we will learn who has won. And now to announce the winner of our contest, I invite the editor-in-chief of Spectrophone Digital Magazine, who is really famous, is one of uh, the creators of the legendary game Star uh, Legacy. Hello, Yuri. Hello, Yuri. What are your impressions regarding our contest? Well, it's for the second year that I participate as a jury member in this contest. And I need to say that the game quality became better this year. 
as a whole. Second, I always look at these games with the eyes of the 1980s and 1990s when those games were really cool. We selected those games for our journal, for our uh, reviews, and I asked myself the question, which games I would select for my magazine in the 1980s and 1990s. And when I calculated everything, I chose three games, White Jaguar, Cosmic Playback, Payback, and the third game, I'm not going to tell you the name of the game, but it would also become part of our magazine. All three games would have 19 points in my magazine. I think that one of the games should be selected specifically. I would give another point to White Jaguar for the graphics. It would take the first place, but the jury disagreed with me, even though it was a very close contest. So, according to the jury opinion, Mars Meyer Alienation took the first place. Congrats! As a contest organizer, I would add that this game took the first place, and our audience also chose this game, so it has uh, the prize of the spectators. Thank you very much. And John Romero promised that uh, he would play this game. And when we talked to him, it was night time, and then he met Dawn with us, he then drank coffee, and he can play our game. So let us ask him to play this game. So let us call him. We actually sent him all the links. Now. All right. I'm checking out the winner of this year's contest. It looks like it's called Mars Mare Alienation. Um, looks pretty cool. That's a really nice title screen. That's a pretty complex title screen. And you can see... Um, just the color blocks, you know, the way that the spectrum's memory is laid out, the, the character graphics memory. And uh, it's it's great. <laughs> it looks like this this guy's gonna get operated on <laughs> on the table. Typical for aliens to do that to humans, of course. All right, let's check out the English version. Drunk fly. <laughs> I gotta see this intro. Sounds great. All right, really good music. Nice. In the quiet July night, a star fell from the sky. Nice scrolling. The pixel art's really nice. Haha. <laughs> It was a meteor. No? Spaceship. Stealth style. <laughs> Through the roof <laughs> of the house. <laughs> they just choose this guy. Take off. They're going to do it in space. <laughs> nice. Mars Mare Alienation. Start a new game. <laughs> Border effects. Probably for getting hit. All right. Nick Zero he did some good music. Nice. Drunk Fly is a great name. The song is cool. I would let it go for a long time, but I know I have to play this. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, we broke out of the back to tank. What's going on? <laughs> the alien. Oh, fight! Look at that. 
human beat him up. Damn aliens. Should reach that blaster, good idea. Oh, nice. Why were there no games this cool back in the 80s on the Spectrum? This is amazing. Okay, show the map. What's, what's up with the map? Okay, we got different rooms. Very cool. So the player broke out of a tank, beat up the alien, and now he wants to get this gun. I should reach that blaster. It's pretty cool that they localized this game. Okay, that probably will hurt. So I'm going to have to get up here somewhere. Oh, if I'm going to reach that blaster, it's probably not in this area. Let me see, can I go this way? Yeah. Oh, I can go over there. Okay, hitting that. All right. Is there another guy? Can I... Nope, I can't release that guy. <laughs> I'm gonna have to jump over this thing. All right. Get over here. Lots of fans and stuff. Open the airlock. I would rather not go outside with that spacesuit. Yeah. You'll die. Okay. Okay. What is that? Oh, it's an elevator. Okay, cool. Let's go in the elevator. Now, ooh, ooh. okay. Okay, I see my health at the top there. And I'm falling down. Oh my God. <laughs> that is totally Totally true to early 80s game design. <laughs> That's what should have happened. Okay. Get back here, get the elevator going up. Forget about the airlock, not gonna happen. Get back up. Really nice uh, help prompts too. And plus over here, alien stuff going on over there. There's like a Dr. Mario pill and this really cool alien that's like blobbing around. <laughs> that's really neat. And this game would have done really well back in the day. Okay, now getting across that. All right. Okay, so there's a dude up there. I can't get through that either, so I have to go over here. Okay. Put that in? Yeah. So I have to go down the elevator. Okay. Oh, I, this is where I get the gun. Thanks. Awesome. With this blaster, I'll kick their asses. Oh, come on. Shoot. Somehow I have to shoot. What is the shoot button again? That one. Okay. Yeah, he's done. Health pill, maybe? Interesting, I cannot get past that laser thing, so. Yeah. Eat it. Oh, nice. That's not a deadly thing. Nice. Didn't have to hit him that, that many times, and I can't get past it. Okay. Go back here, just kill everything basically. Oh, look at these guys coming out now. Wow. I wonder, did I run out of bullets or ammo or something? Let me see. Yeah, there were your, uh, your bullets just before you were killed. <laughs> yeah, I did not know I ran out of bullets. You could get oh. the you, you could get the get the bullets kit. Oh, do I not have the gun anymore? Yeah, I gotta get it again. I started all over again. This is 80s. <laughs> so it looks like we lost you. Huh? Looks like we lost you in the game. What do you mean? Can you well, not we, see my screen? 
No, no, no. We we thought you would just play like 40 seconds and say, oh, okay, I got it. Thank you. But you're just playing and playing. And it's oh, it's a cool so game. Fun. Yeah. There we go. You got to call it down. So, should we give you more time? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's get that. All right. Bam. Yeah. So this, I thought I was going to get hit by that thing, but nope. Easy. Then I just go down here and get the gun. Okay. I like how it respawned, like it spawned an alien there. And there's a pill that I'm going to want to get, I think. Yeah. Bam. Not sure what the pill does. Doesn't say. That guy spawns there. Okay, there he's gone. How many? Oh, I see. I got ammo over on the right. All right, that guy somehow stopped me from going forward. So this guy here, probably the same thing. Nope, that thing's still here. Not sure what I have to do to get past that. Ooh. Oh, he takes off. <laughs> nice. Nice scripting. Really cool. So the aliens don't die. They just go home. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, let's see. If I go back here. Good. That guy's gone. Oh, that guy finally. Oh. I don't know what to happen there. Okay, still don't need to get that. I was already there. Oh, there's a thing up there I didn't get. Okay. Try to shoot the capsule. Oh, uh, which one? Did I just pass it? Yeah, the one way to the left. You mean, do I go back the way I came? Yeah, on the ground floor. Okay. All right, let's see. Shooting the capsule. Those special. two. Uh, those two. Uh, no, the ones to the right. Over here? Yeah. You're talking about? On the blue one's shining. Oh. Try jumping and shooting. Oh, look at that. Okay. Oh, nice. All right, that's how I get through here. And then there's this, and that was something, hopefully good. <laughs> Gotta call down the elevator. Yeah, this is really great for, if this was made in the 80s, this definitely would have been one of the really, really great game in the 80s. Yeah, computer. I wonder if I could tweet from here. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> nice. Cool. Well, this this game looks great. Um, I really like this, uh, you know, multi-screen design, like games in the 80s, like Monty Zuma's Revenge and stuff that had, like, tons of screens. But this one's definitely got a better design because it has a lot of, just a lot of really neat scripted stuff and uh, puzzles to solve. And, uh, you know, you're on an alien ship, so that's pretty cool. In the colors, I mean the limited the limited ZX Spectrum uh, character based um, graphics with color. I think this was done really really well, really well. So yeah, no wonder it won. Great job.